Hey everyone, welcome back to Camp Keyframe. And in today's video, I'm going to tell you how you can optimize your workflow in After Effects and a little bit in Illustrator, but mostly in After Effects because some projects can get really big and you have a lot of layers. So you want to uh, keep it clean and tidy. I'm going to show you how I do this and how you can do this maybe as well. So we, here we are in Illustrator and I have this illustration. Um, with all these different little icons and objects and there are 70 uh, no layer 2 is the first one like around 70 layers which is a lot because all of these things are separate because we have this little thing here which consists of the back piece the shadow these play buttons this bar and all these little different icons and I want to have them all separate so I can um, animate them in a nice way um, I could have gone even further, but I kept it to 70 layers right now because this is now uh, this is one layer, but, but I could have easily just chopped this up into different layers well with little lines. But just to keep it a little bit reasonable, I decided not to do that. So now we already have 70 layers. So when we're here in After Effects, I have imported this and we have 70 layers right here, which is a lot. So the first thing we are going to do is give them all a name. So when you import all your Illustrator layers, so they all have the same name as they do in Illustrator. So here they are called layer 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And uh, you can name your layers in Illustrator and give them a name right here, uh, layer something. And then when you import that into After Effects, those will have those names. But giving them names in Illustrator takes quite a while and is a hassle. So you can better easily do this in After Effects. So what you can do is just select a layer, press enter on your keyboard, and then you can type in a name. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the plugin called Motion V2, which I highly recommend to use. You use, um, it's like 40 bucks and will help you out a lot with different kinds of things. So first off, I'm going to, let's say, select on um, my background layer first. I'm going, I can just hit enter and call this BG, what I mostly do, and I'm going to lock that right now. And let's say I have this thing here. These are all of these layers and they are all, let's one, two, three, four layers. They are all divided, not standing right next to each other. So what I'm going to do is select them all. Uh, what I did right now, I have them all right. Yeah, I'm going to drag them on top of my background layer. So that means that they will all pop together right here. So they're all um, contained within this little space here. So now I have all these layers and I'm going to go to motion to, and then I have this option called name, open that up. And let's call this uh, picture tree. And I'm going to go to hit rename. And then you can see right here that it will click. It will turn all those layers into picture uh, tree, number one, two, three, and four, like that. So I'm going to lock them. And I can do that with all of these shapes like this. I'm going to put them on top of here. I'm going to name them uh, picture metals. Rename, boom, they're done. And I'm going to lock them as well. And I have this little thing here. This consists of the smiley face and this little wink eye and the tongue. So there are three separate layers. And they're somewhere around here. Yeah, I'm going to put them here as well. And we're going to name them this um, smiley. So after you're done naming your other layers, um, we'll go on to the next step to create an even more visual appealing uh, timeline and make it even more clear. And that's to color your layers. So when you're done with naming all of your layers, just like I did right here, nice and easy. So I can easily see, hey, number uh, player is this one. And my tulip, where is my tulip? Somewhere around here, picture tulip, there you go, bam, all of them. So now I can, I can color these layers. So now they're all this lavender color and I see this color thingy right here. So I can say, let's say picture tulip, let's zoom in here a little bit. Uh, let's make this pink. I'm gonna open, click, uh, select them all first and then click on this little thing here, this little icon. And I'm gonna go to, let's say pink, boom, there you go. And let's see, let's go to the picture of the sun, which is up here and I'm gonna make them all yellow. So now I can have all these different icons have their own color, this tree, maybe give that a green color, uh, unlock this background and make that red because it's red, and lock it, lock it again. Uh, my metals, uh, it has this purple background, so maybe make that purple, just to give it a clear idea of what you're doing. Smiley, maybe make that, uh, yeah, I don't know, on something, peach, 
oh kind of fits all right so now you can just uh, give all your uh, colors uh, all your layers i'm sorry some color uh, blue um, to give it a nice little even more easier look at what uh, the different kind of layers are and where they belong together uh, so when you're done after that we're gonna jump into locking layers and the shy button So you've seen me use the lock button before on my background layer, uh, for example, uh, is locked right now, so I can't uh, accidentally move it around. Um, so I'm going to use the lock button on different uh, layers right now. So let's say I am uh, trying to select uh, this little thing, but I keep selecting uh, the, the wrong layer, like, ah, annoying. So I can just go to my flag layers and press uh, lock. Or if I, let's say I only want to work on this player uh, icon, all of these things, I can select all my other layers, lock all of them, and let's see. Uh, yeah, all of them, lock them, and now only my these player uh, layers lock, so I can just drag all around here, and I, I won't select anything and only my player when I'm working, so that's um, more easy. And what I can also do, uh, let's say I want to hide if uh, I'm working in here and I'm going to press the tilde key while hovering here to make this full screen so you can see all my layers and this can be a lot so when you're working maybe I'm going to unlock all of them you're working inside of here and you're animating with a lot of keyframes and stuff and you're doing a lot of stuff and you can't seem to find where you need to be what you can do is use the hide the shy button right here hide and uh, hide button and if I select let's say all of these layers and I'm going to click on this little guy and then you see that he'll pop behind this little uh, wall here and so now they're on shy mode and they're still here nothing happens but when I click this big shy button here all of these layers will disappear disappear from my timeline like that they're not disappearing they're not gone or anything they're still here the only thing is they're not uh, visible right now I can't touch them and then now my timeline is a bit more easy to see and understand so if I click this again my the, the layers come back again just like that and next up I'm going to tell you about pre comps so you can use your shy layer and your lock layer and all of them all of those things to create a, create a more easy looking timeline and to get a better workflow going but what I mostly love to do is when I'm done animating an object like this player or something or this candy, this candy cane thing, when I'm done animating that, I'm one, I want to pre-comp that layer. So what you can do is right, select all of those layers, right click, and then go to create, uh, sorry, um, pre-compose here. I always use my sh keyboard shortcut, so that's why the, the, the mishap. But um, pre-compose, you can click that and you can give it a name. Now in this game, we call it candy cane like that all right and now boom it's all in one layer like you can see this as a group don't forget to check this button as well to make it uh, crisp again and if i double click that it will open a little tab right here next to my uh, main composition and here in here are all my layers in my pre-comp so if i do this with all of these things if i and um, the sh keyboard shortcut is command shift c and um, call this player like that speech bubbles i can maybe Select all of these speech bubbles and pre-compose them to speech bubbles. I recommend you do this after you're done animating this, this because otherwise it will get a little bit uh, difficult to animate them individually. Uh, tulips, let's call this uh, tulip, like that. Okay, um, turn this on and maybe lock them as well. And uh, the flag, uh, pie chart picture of the sun let's call the sun uh, oops smiley all of these different and now you can see my timeline is getting a much more clear uh, metals and my tree layer so there you go check all of them I can unlock them so now I only have uh, 11 layers now including my background so 10 layers that I'm working with um, which makes it a whole lot easier to work with and I have um, I don't have a lot of these uh, layers in here so if I want to animate my uh, tulip now right now I'm going to double click it and I'm going to open it I can animate it here and then I'm, I'm going to go back and everything is animated but it's all still one layer and I can even drag this tulip layer around now if I want so I can even add more animation to that uh, right now you can see that my uh, project uh, window is a bit messed up so next up 
creating folders. So what I mostly like to do is create folders here to put all my different categories of stuff in. Um, what I, when I imported this project, I had this optimized workflow layers with all my Illustrator files in here, my layers, and that's in a separate folder already. But then this is my main composition, the optimized workflow composition. And these are all the smaller compositions that are inside this composition. So uh, what I mostly do is create a new folder and call, those, call that comps. I'm going to put my candy cane in here, my flag, metals, everything, all the comps except my optimized workflow comp. And I'm going to create another folder and call it artwork, like that. I'm going to just drag this artwork folder into that folder. So now I have my artwork with all my, if I uh, import more Illustrator files and layers, I can put them all in artwork here. So they're nice and tidy and neat. And um, in my comps, I have all my compositions that I'm going to use in my uh, main composition. And I'm just going to put this in a folder. You can also drag this onto a new folder. So it creates a folder with that object in it. And we're going to call this render comps. And I'm going to open this and just give this the right name. What I also always do is make this um, like optimized workflow in this case, 1080 times 1080. Uh, 25 FPS. So I know instantly what kind of composition I'm working with here. And let's say I want to duplicate. Uh, um, no, I'm going to create a new um, composition here. And I'm going to go to, um, let's say, a 4K resolution done in, in square, like that, something like that. And I can, let's see, zoom out here. I'm going to put my render comps right in there. I'm going to select that, uh, turn this collapse transformation on, put it on 200%. So now it's a 4K uh, composition. And we're going to put that comp right in here. I'm going to do select, uh, press enter to press command C to copy this text, press command V. And I'm going to go in here and it's called 2160 times 2160. So now I have all these different render comps uh, in here to just make it nice and tidy. So that kind of sums everything up. This is now one big happy family of pre-comps that all work together greatly. It's neat. It's I can see where I'm going and if I save this project for someone else to work on later, you can always see oh, artwork, compositions and my render comps are right in here. And I'm doing this all in all caps. That's just uh, a thing, a personal thing that I like. I don't know why it just looks a bit more neat uh, to my taste. Um, so that's it. That's how uh, a quick look or maybe not so quick look at how I optimize my After Effects workflow. I hope you learn something from this. And if you want to see me animate this whole illustration here, uh, if that's something you would like to see, uh, just let me know in the comments down below and I will do that for you if you would like that. Um, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me grow the channel. Uh, subscribe to my Camp Keyframe channel if you aren't already. And I hope to see you next week with another tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.